Welcome to Sumster Games, the place to find new strategy games, and today we're gonna continue my let's play of Help Will Come Tomorrow. So, first thing we gotta do is we got a lot of thirsty people, so what we're gonna do is we're going to turn the water into... First we're gonna have to turn it into some food, and then we're gonna turn it into some drink, possibly a fruit thing. But first, we, let's make a delicious soup that doesn't need so much... Uh, it doesn't need... Actually, we're gonna take the worst mushroom because you can see here like kind of the expiring dates. We want to use the one that will expire a bit sooner. Vegetable-wise, we're gonna grab this mushroom a lot and this only needs three water. We're gonna tell Juju's to make it. And we need fire level at 10%. So first of all, we gotta increase the fire level. Let me put... Uh, we'll put, let's say... It's a good fuel. We'll put some needles in there. Maybe two. Let's increase the cam visibility but helps with freezing. Now we're going to go back to cook the delicious soup. So we'll put these lower, older mushrooms in there. And make some soup, give everybody a taste. So we're not hungry. Alright, everybody let's have one. So we're going to give one to Juju's who made it. Then to Sir Arcus and to me. Robert is not that hungry, so I'll give Robert just like some moss. Yeah, he's not hungry at all. Now, instead of a drink, we're actually going to make a herbal tea with the mushroom as well. We will put these mushrooms then. And we'll send... Yeah. I will again tell uh, Juju's to do it, and we're going to have everybody drink a herbal tea. If we can, I mean. How much herbal tea do we have got? Two. So we'll give it to me and to Robert. Okay, nobody else is thirsty now. That's perfect. Then I'm going to send myself and... Um, my, ooh, we can, we can hunt animals. That's really cool. So I'm going to send myself and Sir Arcus for expedition because he's good at it and he likes me. And he has clothes now. It's actually not going to be super cold. Can we use the broken rifle? We can. Okay, so let's let's send it us over. And off we go. We'll go here to hunt some animals. In the shade of spruces on the banks of a forest stream flowing down like a thin trickle on a steep slope, you see a masked deer. A small tiger deer with bizarre fangs. It's a great opportunity to bring some fresh meat to the camp. Leave the animal no. Try to run up and catch the animal. Oh. <laughs> I don't think we're going to succeed, but we'll try. The mass deers turn out to have a great sense of smell. It seems to have sensed the intention of the attack because it escaped to the nearby thicket even before you took the first step. We've got nothing. I'm going to search this place. I don't think we can actually get the animals yet because we've got no tools. We're going to need to build a workshop to get some tools there, but we can try again. What a surprise. You see a strange animal resembling a deer or a small doe at the nearby grove. It has no antlers and its protruding ears bring a hair to mind more than a proud deer. It must be a Siberian musk deer, a timid creature often hunted for its fragrant secretions. Well, right now you are more interested in its meat and for I'll try to get closer, but again, I don't have high hope. We succeeded! You move closer without alerting the fan, but what's next? Maybe you can come even closer? Try to throw some stones at the animal. A stronger pressed bubble hit the mask here in the ramp and it only frightened it. The animal disappeared between the trees a moment later. I have to be equipped a little better for future hunting. Yeah, let's just do regular searching. And we're going to increase, uh, ignore the animals for now. Oh, we've got another event. Under the snowy tuft of moss, you find an old deer skeleton with a magnificent fork horn. Rusted arrow hearts are still stuck between its ribs. The animal is probably hit, but it escaped its hunter and died in its grove. Without much thinking, you collect arrowheads and some useful bones. Cool. Uh, we'll go to this risky thing, we'll try it. What we can find. Oof. When in danger, the body sometimes acts intensively and the mind records events with a certain delay. It seems to you that first the ricochet chipped off a piece of bark right next to you and only then you heard the bang of the shot echoed through the white alley. Another bullet hit the frozen embankment, accidentally creating a sophisticated shape in clay. Only then did you start to run. Bullets are whistling over your heads, but you run without stopping. You manage to fall between the snow heaps. But this is only a temporary asylum. The renegades do not give up and run towards you. You see with the horror that you leave a trace of blood on the ground. Run towards the trees. 
He reach a grove among the flying balls. When you fall between the trees, the shots stop. However, you are not whipped by branches, almost spitting out your lungs. Finally, you slide into the cold snow, exhausted, with no will to fight for your life anymore. What will be, will be. This time you've made it, but Tex must have lost the track or they didn't want to go through the thicket. And you realize that the threat is over. Get new strength and return to the camp as soon as possible. Alright, yeah, we've, we definitely just go home. Got some action points left, but I'm in shock. Yeah, no wonder. Alright, so first of all, somebody needs to unsnow it. So I'm gonna try. I succeeded, okay. And we need to repair this. Actually, we could just straight up use it. So it actually keeps working, which is nice. Can I get a strength? I don't think so. We still need to treat his ankles. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab Sir Edward, Sir Arcus and we're going to tell him to treat Robert. Not the other way. Robert to get treated by Sir Arcus. Really kind of hoping that would help with the thing. Do we need something extra to get rid of... Unlocks the ancient amputation, compresses for frostbite wound cleansing. It's only a twisted ankle. Interesting. To improve a bad status, unconscious, shocked and sick. I guess it doesn't count for the... Oh, we need a wound dressing maybe. It's gonna have to get this. So can we get this done? We can, because we only have two actions left on this guy and he cannot do it with other people. So. Sir Arcus is exhausted, so he will go and rest. And then you, what can you do? Maybe we kind of miscalculate this because he probably can't do anything. He can't build this by himself. Unfortunate. Well, in that case, let's just make more water because we're always going to need that. So let's fill the water with robbers can do it twice. Yeah, he's not happy about it because he doesn't like to do like small actions. It actually cost him two actions to do it because he really doesn't like to, but I didn't really have any better options. Time for the night. Let's talk about crash and slaughter. We were saved from disaster and avoided the slaughter. It's unthinkable. Do you know if anyone else survived? They took us by surprise. It was a well-organized operation. The attackers had dynamite and used it only to delay the train, but also blew up the car in which war veterans were traveling. They knew where to hit. And then, they shot the Cyrus without mercy. If someone has survived. They probably holed up in the woods as we did. We must stay together until help arrives. We're in the middle of the Siberian taiga without appropriate clothes and food, surrounded by thugs going after us. How much longer can we survive in such conditions? One, two days at the most. Hey, we still had a week already, alright? No need to be a pessimist, says Sir Arcus. Besides, I survived so many things. This is like not even in the top 10 most dangerous thing that I survived. Really? Why aren't you the boss? Eh, I like to let others sleep. In that case, let's hope that help will come tomorrow. Oh, love that. Of the fallback towards the name. The camp morale increased a lot. Let's talk about Lucky Charm. Sir Arcus, what are you wearing around your neck? <laughs> Should we talk about the fact that I probably like to stare at his neck? <laughs> Why do you call me a child? Come on, man. <laughs> what do you mean, child? How old am I? I've seen that you're still wearing something on a chain, but it's neither a cross nor a dog tag. Ooh, we apparently stared at the neck a lot. An extremely sharp eye, my dear. What is more, few girls even know what a dog tag is, but that's something unusual. Looks like an amulet. Are the English superstitious? Um, yeah, let's go with yes. We have several superstitions and traditions, I think, similar to yours. For example, now, in the fall, we try to catch falling leaves before they touch the ground. Oh, and you still have to put a few coins in the pocket of your new autumn overcoat. He's the only one who has a coat, like, there's no need to brag about it, okay? I've had even a few copecks here, but in Moscow, I was talking to buying a souvenir watch. After the disaster, little of it remained. You should have bought a Matryoshka, even if it breaks, you would have seven more. Haha, <laughs> great joke. But he made me feel better, so I'll tell you this. This pen is an African amulet, in fact. I survived with the predicaments that I could talk about for hours, and you wouldn't believe it. 
Ooh, we're becoming friends. That's good because we always go on an expedition together. You'll tell me all about it in our next expedition so it can help us all now. I hope so, girl. Ooh, our camp morale is going up in the world. Yeah. I like that I'm starting to have friends because Robert and I are just like arguing all the time. <laughs> but apparently Sir, Sir Arcus and I are making very good friends. Cool. And and Juju's like, he's just like he doesn't like he just likes to make his food and just be quiet. Like he doesn't like to talk, he's like, oh just I just take care of the food. Shelter's under snow. Why is everybody under snow all the time? Alright, eating time, drinking time. So actually we should also start building things. So what first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna build a workshop here with um Robert and Juju's. We'll give you some we don't have enough wood, so instead of wood, we'll grab more needles. Not enough resources. Not enough bones. Yeah, that's enough. Good. Because this will allow us to make hunting gear, so we could, when I go with uh, Sir Arcus, we might be able to actually hunt some animals, which would be nice. We learned that Robert is sparing. This character has a chance to gain some of the ingredients from construction development recipes. Nice. And that, ooh, Juju is a craftsman. This character has a chance to save action points when creating tools or weapons. So we're actually gonna tell him to do something. He could create a tool, could even make a knife? Or a shovel. Now let's make a knife. Good bones. Not, not uh, Robert, uh, Juju. Make me a knife. And what is difficult about this? I will cut it a bit and it's gonna be done. Fabric alteration. We could turn rag into canvas? Canvas into string and get a rope. We'll, we'll decide that later. Okay, so we need, we need somebody to make food. So you, Juju's. Make me food. Delicious soup. Does that takes the least amount? No, we need the other mushrooms. The least amount of water. To just please do it. And we're going to e give it to everybody to eat. I'll give it to Robert, to Juju's, and to me. And Sir Edward is just going to take this moss and some mushrooms, maybe? Good. Now, some of our people are freezing, so we're going to have to increase the fuel here. Let's do that. Okay, visibility is quite low now. Oh, actually, we increased it, but it's okay. It should help us with the freezing. Now, we should start move. So I'm going to grab both myself and Sir Edward and go on the expedition. I'll try to get some animals here because we should now have the knife. Can I grab the knife? Okay, first of all, I need Sir Edward and myself. We want the knife. I'm gonna give it to him. I think that makes sense. Can I grab the broken weapon? Let's give it to him as well. Lamp oil, we don't need that. So let's go. Let's try to get this thing. Ooh, so we can use the knife now. In the shade of spruces and the banks of forest stream flowing down are like a thin trickle of a we see mouse. Have you already read that? I started to throw a knife at the animal. It's your lucky day! The mask clears false after an accurate bullet to the next. Now we've got to get this carcass to the camp somehow. And let's grab it. Very good. Now we're gonna keep moving. We'll try to find Oh actually I should have searched. Oh too bad. I try to get closer. And we'll throw a knife at it. Necro trust weapon clicked on the tree and the armed musket immediately leaped away. Carefully checked the place where it was grazing, but unfortunately there are no signs of blood. We failed, but we'll search. Oh, we find nothing. Okay, we'll keep moving towards the animal. Oh, we lost a lot of action points there. Again, we'll keep trying to throw a knife. He had one chance to hit it and he failed, okay? Search. I would like to not lose all of my actions, so we'll move just to one more place, search, and then we'll go back to camp. Right now, we don't need that many resources. We need to work more. We only got three bucks. Okay, right, let's, let's go home. We didn't get much, but that's okay. Now, actually, we could cook food, but we are not hungry, so we'll leave the food for next time, I think. 
Instead, I want to remove the snow here so somebody could rest. Who wants to rest? We need to check. Who would like to rest? Jujus needs to rest. And Sir Robert still has one action point. You, do, you could try to regain strength. Heal. I, don't, I still think it's not going to help us with the trusting. I really think that we need to get this medical tools to help with that. We'll see. Warmth wise, could we take the coat away from him and give it just like temporarily to Robert? Because he seems to be freezing a lot. Maybe it will help us with the freezing thing. I also have 26% with the campfire, but doesn't seem to be that helpful. Yeah, care, gather strength, repair. Okay. Alright, so it's the end of the day. Okay, we, we've got people thirsty. Sir Arcus is thirsty, and so is Robert. Good. Everybody's still freezing. I could increase this, but I'm kind of worried about it being a bit... Like, vis about the visibility. 36%. Doesn't seem to help with the... With the freezing yet. We'll do a bit more. 51%. Alright, we're not gonna do any more. And the next time we'll handle the musky. So let's let's go to sleep. Yeah, it's because it's heavy snowing. It's better not to leave camp. We left the camp anyway. To protect against wind, it's worth building a shelter walls or surrounding the camp with the palisade. Yeah, we might do that. Do it later. I think next time we might just spend the time building because we got enough food. So we just need to cook at home and things like that. You have been afraid that this moment would come since the beginning of this grim adventure. Your camp has been discovered. A trampled branch snapped between the trees and as soon as you waved the torch, a figure made a run for it. Is this one of the thugs? But why hasn't he shot you? Or is it some survivor who took you for the renegades? Call for him, convincing that you're not the criminals. Oof. You shout for the fugitive that you will not do anything to him and that he can come back, but the silence answers you. Whoever this was disappeared into the forest thicket. There is no point in running after him in the cold. Fortunately, they probably will die at night without a campfire. Ooh. Let's talk about the handcar. Fortunately, the locomotive will not start, but a handcar was attached to the last car to reduce it to get it out of here. And we will go away towards the setting sun. Come on, if the handcar is derailed, we will not be able to put it on the track among the whistle of bullet of these thugs. But if it isn't derailed, anyway, the handcar is not everything. Saddle horses were in the last car too. So now they're chopped meat? Even if some of the horses survived the catastrophe, they were probably taken by these bandits. We're getting like a... We're getting like a submarine fever. We're spending too much time to get, get kind of upset to each other. So instead of checking it, rather he sit here idle. What's wrong with you? Do you expect everything to be done for you? Easy, Captain. In a fit of anger, it's easy to sign that trying to drag your team in the enemy's ambush is also a disgrace. Oof, the morale fell. To hell with you. Oh, boys, come on. Just doing so well, now we just keep arguing. Let's talk about Vadim. He hasn't spoken much. Or Juju's. Despite these gloomy circumstances, I'm happy about our little experiment. Experiment? What do you mean by that? Classless society, of course. Gosh, he's starting again. Again? He didn't say anything for like three episodes. <laughs> and by episodes, I mean days, of course. It is amazing how we were able to rise above differences in the face of danger. Just like the French communists, even the upper classes rolled up their sleeves today. Yeah, the upper class guy who always goes to the expedition and brings us all the food. I know you can't cope with it well. I know you're not used to such an effort. My bearded proletarians appreciate your willingness. This was a really bad day morale for us. Us and you again? We're just talking about rising above differences. It wasn't a taunt, my dear. After all, it's normal that the working people know what to do in these situations, and you still have to learn a little bit. <laughs> oh man. Tomorrow I will show you how to expand the workshop and sell like wood for the structure correctly so that it doesn't happen again. <laughs> I'll just ignore him. Good intentions are one thing, but nothing can replace the example and practice. You just a graduate of the University of Life and learned this and that. 
Just keep ignoring. Keep it's just like, hey, you might think I talk a lot, but I like to when my words match those of my deeds, I think it's fair. No, I don't think you talk a lot. This is like the first time we talked. Seriously? <laughs> you gotta tell him to shut up because he keeps lowering my morale, but it's just gonna ignore it one more time. Work at the grassroots, the role of a modern intellectual is not only to educate but also to lead by example. Red flag obliges. Is it over? Okay, I'm just gonna shut up now. <laughs> oh, shut up. Because you lowered my morale so bad. We are not in mood, but the dialogue is the basis of understanding and synthesis. Let me quote Hegel. Just no. <laughs> just stop. Each thesis already contains an antithesis and synthesis of all is them both. I see why he was quiet all the time, because it just ruins everybody's day. The reality consists of pairs of opposing phenomena, fight between them and shows changes, development, adaptations. In other words, should we fight now to unite? Ah, wonderful forest, it will not it down. I will not it down, sorry. It increases the morale again. Let's skip this as always. Alright, I think this is a good time to end the episode. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, write down in the comments and you can click on the right to watch the next one. Or you can click on the bottom to watch Wonderlust. I'll see you there. Bye bye!